Good morning. In uh, this video, we will see how to assess the astronomical scene forecasts uh, by means of uh, in focus area disk analysis uh, following uh, different uh, scale values of Pickering uh, scale. Uh, at first, we have uh, uh, to consider that uh, given uh, a, a good uh, telescope, well built, uh, without significant aberrations, and uh, able to produce uh, diffraction limited images. In order to produce high quality images, uh, we have to satisfy four uh, conditions. The first is optimal collimation. For example, one of the telescopes we will use, Vixen BMC 110L, required a special attention and all branch installing in order to better do uh, collimation. Uh, here there are also three books that I strongly suggest, in particular the first for star testing and uh, second and third in order to better understand the performances of uh, the telescope. So first condition, optimal collimation. Second condition, telescope at precisely the same temperature of the air. For example, Celestron C11, that will be the second telescope we will use, requires even more than one hour uh, to get the same, to, to, to go into the thermal equilibrium with uh, the outside air. Third condition, atmospheric dispersion. Uh, atmospheric dispersion must be managed in some way, for example, by means of Risley prisms. What are Risley prisms? Uh, just for uh, this is a Risley prism that can be uh, configured by moving uh, uh, this. Okay, but we will not use uh, Risley prism. Anyway, Risley prism is absolutely mandatory if you want to get high level images with uh, uh, large scopes. This is a, a very good reference from Damian Pitch. And finally, good seeing. Okay, so uh, in order to do uh, in this video, we will uh, consider the first three conditions satisfied and we will concentrate on this. So now we will see very briefly what is uh, the forecast system that we will use uh, for doing assessment. It is this. Meteo, Meteo Blue that works very well and gives interesting uh, information we will see briefly. Uh, this is the Pickering scene scale from a website from Damian Peach and uh, is also on the, on the slide. This is a very interesting paper from uh, Damian Peach on atmospheric dispersions also in the slides. And finally, here there is um, a, an introducing uh, website again from Damian Peach on effects of seeing. Uh, these are the results that can be uh, obtained from uh, Meteor Blue. Uh, you can get images from uh, uh, 250 hectopascal winds, so at about uh, 10,000 meters above the sea level and also the uh, CAPE, that is another index that can be useful, at least in my um, opinion. And in particular, you can get these uh, forecasts. Uh, and here we have uh, four different situations in which we have got uh, images. So let's go directly to see at first, uh, which is the setup that we used to get the images, uh, we use the, this, um, uh, this camera and in particular you can see that uh, the camera is attached uh, to a uh, Teleview PowerMate 2.5 plus an additional, uh, um, an additional Barlow uh, from uh, Bader. Okay. So by using two Barlows, it uh, it have been it has been possible 
uh, it, would, it was possible to, to get uh, good movies. So now we can go directly to see the results. Okay, let's start with, um, sorry, with this. Okay, at first, just to confirm that the scopes are well aligned, we can see here uh, that uh, on in this image we can see the VIX and VMC 110 L uh, that is seeing an artificial star at 7 meters inside uh, the house. You can see from the movie, it is a movie, that uh, the image is very slowly changing but uh, of course there is uh, some spherical aberration due to the very reduced distance. Here you can see the same scope but at uh, uh, 85 meters of distance uh, over a grass green uh, and you can see that uh, seeing is not uh, perfect anymore because of the slow fluctuation of the air. Uh, this is again an artificial star from the C11, Celestron 11, because we will use Vixen VMC 110L and Celestron C11. You can see from this image that the Celestron C11 is uh, perfectly aligned. The, in this case the artificial star is at 33 meters, but you can see that uh, there are anyway some uh, problems due to the air. And here this is the case in which uh, we have 37 meter per second. Uh, there is also the Pickering scale measured, of course, from the subjective point of view, my, mine point of view. Uh, please note that this, in this case, the star is the Polaris star because it is uh, stopped into the into the uh, stopped. Is okay. So we can see the forecast corresponding to this uh, here it is this you can see that the numbers are very good but there is a very strong jet stream and the, the jet stream alone is more than sufficient to produce uh, this very bad seeing okay now second step uh, in other conditions in particular, in this case, we have a very a good seeing, a very good seeing, actually. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, this is, again, a Polaris star. And uh, the Pickering scale, uh, at least in my opinion, was 7, 7.5. Uh, please note that it is a, a, a Kletz of Max Kutov from 110 millimeters, approximately. Uh, please note that that was the seeing at 45 degrees, but if you go up, seeing uh, was much better. Uh, please note that in the same day, it was possible to see very well solar granulation with a 5 inches refractor, and also Jupiter with uh, the Vixen EMC 110L uh, was very good, very interesting. Also with uh, the Celestron C11, the same day. But if you see in the same day here, uh, since Polaris star is at 45 degrees, the atmospheric dispersion is extremely strong. And even if uh, the, the seeing in the Pickering scale is 7, 7.5, please remember that Pickering scale is computed for a uh, 13 uh, uh, centimeters uh, refractor, not for a C11, of course. But you can see very a very very strong uh, atmospheric dispersion. Here we have intermediate uh, seeing condition, not so bad like this, but uh, not perfect like this. Okay. Again, we can see here the seeing is the jet stream are 20 meter per second. Picking scale is 4.55. 4 again Polaris. You see that is uh, not as good as here, 
But here for the C11, it is very interesting because you can see very clearly that the, the seeing uh, is very, very bad. Uh, it is basically not possible to understand anything. And also atmospheric dispersion is not very clear because uh, um, th there is a, a, a sort of big uh, uh, bubble that cannot be seen uh, in detail. Please also note that uh, VMC 110L have the horizon on the bottom of the image, but for the Celestron C11, uh, the horizon is uh, here in this case and uh, here in this case because of uh, different uh, moment, different uh, uh, orientation. So, uh, just to finish the video, we can go to see what happens. So, we have seen that bad conditions, even if the numbers are good, uh, the, the important parameter is this. These are the two intermediate values. You see that uh, the the jet stream is high, not so high. The excellent condition are these. You can see that probably better than this is not possible at all. Okay, so given this uh, seeing that is absolutely perfect, at least in the forecast, uh, please also note that for the same situation, this one, we add this map, again given for Meteor Blue, and also this other map. Please note that the region considered is here, where is the, the cross here, and the same here, where is the cross. Uh, so, even if these conditions are uh, perfect, almost perfect, please note that images were, were got approximately here, okay, even with almost perfect forecasts, uh, it is important to see that the final result is not good enough with the Celestron C11. So this means that uh, at first, in order to get best conditions, you have to go uh, toward, uh, um, toward the zenith. It is the only solution, first. Second, you have to compensate if you cannot go to the zenith. You have to compensate by means of Risley prisms, because otherwise it is basically impossible to see the, the airy disk. Please also note that with the same scope that is uh, well collimated, as you can see clearly here, with uh, the same scope, if you uh, see in the, with the same seeing a star near the zenith, you can uh, see a perfect uh, airy disk, exactly like uh, this one. For example, uh, lambda, lambda Cigni, for example, just to have an example. Okay, uh, that's all, thank you.